Welcome to Bike Wale and to a comparison road test review between two Royal Enfield motorcycles. On one side we have Royal Enfield's largest selling motorcycle, the Classic 350, while on the other is Royal Enfield's newest product, well at least at the time of filming this video, the Hunter 350. Now both these motorcycles share a lot of components, the biggest of which is the 349cc single cylinder engine that is based on Royal Enfield's J platform. But despite the similarities under the skin, both these motorcycles are drastically different and in this video we are comparing them for you to make a better buying decision. But before we go any further, make sure that you are subscribed to our channel and clicked on the bell icon to stay notified every time we upload a new video. Let's start with the design and the first thing that you would notice is the fact that both these motorcycles pack a retro styling. The classic 350 more so and it's instantly recognizable as a Royal Enfield and its design hasn't changed a lot since it was first introduced. The retro styling is enhanced by features such as this round headlight with a beak style bezel at the front. Then at the back you have this teardrop shaped fuel tank with tank pads on either side. You also see this pea shooter exhaust and wire spoked wheels and all of these styling elements enhance the retro look of the classic 350. In comparison, the Hunter 350 packs a more neo retro design that reminds us of the Interceptor 650. Similar to the classic, this motorcycle too uses a round headlight and a curvy fuel tank but you would notice that most panels have been blacked out and most importantly this motorcycle gets alloy wheels that are shod in tubeless tyres and all of these features are going to appeal to a young buyer. The classic 350 on the other hand is going to appeal to a more mature buyer. I personally like the Hunter 350. What about you? Do let us know in the comment section. These motorcycles have been with us for some time now and we have used them in a variety of riding conditions including the Mumbai monsoons and they have held together very well. The paint quality is top notch while the switches operate with an assuring click. The engine cover on the classic 350 however is showing signs of aging and it somewhat ruins an otherwise achingly beautiful retro look of the motorcycle. The Hunter 350 on the other hand has held together and we do not have any complaints in the build quality department here. The classic 350 tips the weighing scales at 195 kilograms, making it nearly 18 kilos heavier than the Hunter 350. But it has a 15mm lower seat height that will allow shorter riders to move it around easily when seated on the saddle. Now one may think that it will be difficult to park the classic 350 on the center stand, but that is not the case. You see, Royal Enfield did not redesign the center stand for the Hunter 350 and thus the classic 350 with its 18 inch wheels is easier to put on the center stand. The same task is relatively difficult on the 17 inch wheel equipped Hunter 350 and you will have to put additional efforts to pull this motorcycle up and back to park it on the center stand. And then there are the ergonomics. The classic 350 packs more upright and comfortable ergonomics that have been achieved through this tall set handlebar and these forward set foot pegs. In comparison, the Hunter 350 gets a flatter handlebar and relatively rare set foot pegs. Now to give you an idea, my colleague Anuj Mishra, who's just as tall as me, is going to mount the Hunter to give you an idea about how both riders look on the motorcycles. As you can see, he is leaning slightly forward on the Hunter while I am seating upright. The sporty ergonomics on the Hunter along with the 17 inch wheels on both ends make it easy to filter through traffic. Moreover, the riding position offsets some of the load from the lower back thus giving more comfort on longer rides.
speaking of comfort, let's talk about the suspension setup. The Classic 350 and the Hunter 350 pack a firm suspension setup, but it isn't harsh or unbearable. The Hunter 350's ergonomics do give it an edge and the rider can offload some of the weight from the lower back by putting stress on the handlebar and the foot pegs. Doing the same isn't as easy on the Classic 350. But what does work in the Classic 350's favour are the list of optional accessories that include touring-focused hardware such as a tall windscreen and touring seats. These enhance the long-distance mile-munching capabilities of the Classic 350. While we are yet to test the Hunter 350's touring prowess, my colleague Anuj Mishra, whom you saw earlier in the video, has ridden the Classic 350 to Goa and back. And we will leave a link to that detailed highway touring report in the description below. Both the motorcycles use a 349cc single-cylinder air-cooled engine that is based on Royal Enfield's new J platform. We saw the same motor on the Meteor 350 as well. Now this motor is tuned to develop 20.2 bhp of maximum power and 27 newton meters of peak torque. Now despite the similarities in the power and torque output numbers, both motorcycles get a different engine mapping. More on that in the later part of the review. But the Hunter 350, as we said before, is 18 kilograms lighter than the Classic 350, thus giving it a better power to weight ratio. How does it translate into real life? We'll get to that in a bit. But right now, what I'm going to do is fire up the engine of the Classic 350 for you to hear the exhaust note. But we are not going to do the same for the Hunter as it is running an aftermarket exhaust that we are testing on Bike Valley. But what we will do is show you a video from our previous comparisons where the Hunter is running the stock exhaust setup and you can hear the stock exhaust note in that video. Now before I fire up the motorcycle for you to hear the exhaust note, let me give you a brief background of what we are going to do here today. Now similar to what Vikran did in the previous video, we are going to try to rev this motorcycle to what seems like 3000 rpm and 6000 rpm. Now there is no specific way of doing this because both the motorcycles miss the tachometer. At the same time, my colleague Anuj Mishra, who is going to step into the frame, is going to try and capture the exhaust note from the same angle as Pratik did in the previous video. Let's hear how the motorcycle sounds. That's how it sounds on idle. That seems to be like 3000 RPM. And that's what seems like 6000 revs. Now what might be 3000 RPM? And now what might be 6000 RPM? The Classic 350 and the Hunter 350 use a long stroke engine which favours more relaxed performance. Thus, it has a decent low and mid range, but it does not like to be revved hard. Still, you can cruise at 80 to 90 km per hour on the highway with minimum vibrations and some juice left for overtakes, but that does need some additional planning. Both motorcycles miss an assist and slipper clutch mechanism that make the clutch lever feel very hard, which is a pain especially in bumper to bumper traffic situations. Luckily, you don't have to keep shifting so often because both motorcycles pack a commendable tractability and you can keep treading along in the fifth gear at as low as 30 km per hour, another trait that comes handy when riding in the city. While the engine feels absolutely perfect for the Classic 350, the Hunter 350 would have worked even better with a sportier engine mapping. The braking setup has always been the Achilles heel for Royal Enfield motorcycles and these two aren't any different. Despite getting vibrate sourced calipers, these motorcycles lack the confidence-inspiring bite and it is especially a letdown on the sportier Hunter 350. 
The feature list is identical on both these motorcycles and while they do not get modern equipment such as LED headlight, they do benefit from Royal Enfield's stripper navigation system as an optional accessory. This optional extra feels better integrated into the classic 350's cockpit than it does in the Hunter 350. Still, it doesn't feel like an afterthought as it does on the Himalayan. The cockpit itself is notably different thanks to the instrument cluster layout and the classic 350 gets a relatively lower spec console as compared to the Hunter 350. While both motorcycles miss a tachometer, the Hunter 350 shows additional information such as a gear position indicator and engine temperature. The Hunter 350 is available at a much lower price tag than the classic 350. The prices for the Hunter 350 start from 1.50 lakh while the Classic is available from 1.90 lakh onwards which makes it almost 40,000 more expensive. You can check out the variant wise pricing on your screens right now. So which one of these should you buy? Well, we have compiled a score sheet which you can see on your screens right now. As it's clearly evident, the new kid on the block outruns the classic 350 by a big margin. The Hunter 350 packs sporty ergonomics, a slightly more information-rich instrument cluster and retails at a much lower price tag than the classic 350 and all of this is going to appeal to a new, young and first-time buyer. The Classic 350 on the other hand is going to appeal to a more mature buyer who wants a relaxed ride experience and is not really in a hurry to reach anywhere. What's my pick? I'm going to pick the Hunter 350 because it suits my riding style. What about you? We are eager to hear. Let us know in the comment section. Till next time, this is Sovil signing off.